The biggest lessons I've learned in my life are here. Through different topics, I'm going to inspire and motivate you to reach your success and your dreams. I'm so grateful that you're here on Journey to Success. So let's enjoy my next episode together. Hi guys, my name is Fabio from the Fabio Podcast, Journey to Success, and uh, welcome to my podcast. Today we're going to talk about this new book. And uh, first of all, uh, um, I would like to say uh, thanks to storyshots.com that gives me the opportunity to read a summary of uh, any book. Of course, if you like to have a check on their website, you're more than welcome. And uh, and let's start. And let's start. So um, today we're going to talk about this book. The name of the book is Becoming uh, Supernatural. And uh, the author, the writer of the book is Joe Dispenza. Um, The first time that I hear about this book was um, maybe a couple of months ago. So I was doing uh, an interview um, and this guy said to me, uh, you know, something that really changed my life uh, was this book. Uh, it's from Joe Dispenza, uh, Become Supernatural, Become Supernatural. Since I read the book, my life changed. And today we're going to uh, have a, a reading about this uh, summary. All right, let's start. I'm very excited. So, how common people are doing the uncommon? Chapter 1. Sentence Summary of Becoming Supernatural. So, Becoming Supernatural is a transformative exploration by Dr. Joe Dispenza, showcasing how individuals can use scientific principles and spiritual practices to transcend common human experience and unlock their extraordinary potential. Life gets busy. Has Becoming Supernatural been on your reading list? Learn the key insight now. Uh, We're scratching the surface in this Becoming Supernatural summary. If you don't uh, already have Dr. Joe Dispenza's popular book on psychology and spirituality, order it here, so order on uh, uh, Story Shots or get the audiobook for free on Amazon to learn the juicy details. Introduction. How much of your... Creative energy are you losing to negative emotions such as guilt, hatred, fear or resentment? You can uh, reroute all that energy to create the future you want. All you have to do is rewire your brain. If you understand your heart intelligence, you can enhance your mind-body connection. You can realize self-transformation and empowerment. Lose the habits trying uh, you to the best and become supernatural. We can't solve our problems using the same thinking we used when we created them. In Becoming Supernatural, Dr. J. Dispenza argues a vital uh, yet controversial point. Changing our thinking goes far deeper than just changing perspectives. This book is a profound reading which Dispense explores the scientific and mystical realms. He shows you how to free yourself from uh, self-imposed yet unjustified limitations. In doing so, you can transcend physical limitations and become who you truly want to become. Dispensa also shares many examples and guides to help you understand and do what it takes to become supernatural. Let's explore the many ideas contained in Becoming Supernatural. Listen to the audiobook Summary of Becoming Supernatural. So about Dr. Joe Dispensa. Dr. Joe Dispensa is a chiropractor, writer and speaker. His primary focus areas have been epigenetics quantum physics, and neuroscience. Uh, Dispenza is a best-selling author of books including Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, You Are the Placebo, and Becoming Supernatural. is also featured in several documentaries, notably Heal, Rewired, and What the Bleep Do We Know. 
His work has earned him acclaim and criticism in equal measure, and it's easy to understand why. Uh, Dispenza suggests that the world is divided into the explained and the un- unexplained. Most people are conditioned to accept what science can explain, but reality is intertwined with things that conventional science cannot explain. In these worlds, common people are doing the uncommon. In a world surrounded by the mundane, mundane many experience things that are considered out of this world, having experienced and recorded several of these phenomena. He uh, evaluated them scientifically. Eventually, his findings culminated in uh, becoming uh, supernatural. Okay, chapter one. Emotions and stress directly influence our health. We first learned the story of Anna. Anna developed serious health conditions after her husband committed suicide. Medically speaking, living in a stressed state is like living in constant survival mode. The body's sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight system, turns on and uses a lot of energy in response to the stressor. The body can only deal with short-term stress. The body never resumes a normal state if the pressure doesn't end. But we can't live in this emergency mood for extended periods without adverse health and mental health effects. Effects of emotional stress and trauma. Thanks to our large brain, we can think about our problems, relive past events, or worry about the future. Reliving the past or trying to control an unpredictable future can produce the same effect on us as the actual event. Both throw the body off its typical psychological balance. Anna repeatedly relived the stressful situation and emotions in her mind. Her body couldn't differentiate between the actual event and the stressful memories. This response effectively threw her body into a constant state of survival. Here we have a quote from Joe Dispenza. Emotions are the chemical consequences or feedback of past experiences. Experiences create emotions. As our sensor record information, our neuron recognize into networks. They then feeds into particular pattern. This causes the brain to send a chemical uh, through the body, which is the emotional response. That's why we can remember events better if we can uh, uh, remember how they feel. The stronger the emotional response, the stronger the change in internal chemistry it causes. The brain pays attention whenever a significant change occurs inside us. It takes a snapshot of that experience, which becomes a memory of that experience. The memory of an event can also become neurologically implanted in the brain. The scene becomes implanted in our gray matter, like what happened to Anna. The combination of people, objects, scenes, times, and place is etched into our brains like a holographic image. Over time it becomes a long-term memory. And here we have an image with uh, another phrase. It says leveraging the power of intention and elevated emotion. Um, Let's stop a little bit. So it's interesting introduction and uh, it says something that we all know until now but it's uh, interesting to know how you know this uh, these things uh, works in the real life. I mean, uh, there are things that we don't really remember. There are other things that we remember. There are other things that we clearly remember. So the thought, the thought that we clearly remember are the one uh, where they they um, got emotion on it. So emotion, uh, emotions, feelings. Uh, that's also the situation why we uh, tend to remember also bad things, right? In my opinion, uh, because... A, 
the 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 bad memories are so uh filled of uh, strong uh, emotions like uh anger or um disappointment you know uh these strong emotions are very 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 uh um are emotion that you can feel very well <laughs> and um that's the reason why we all of us remember something that happened in our past, but it's something that we don't really want to remember. Uh, as much as for the beautiful thoughts as well, as much as for the beautiful uh, memories we have. Uh, but in the case, yes, we, ha- we have... A, also in the case exists uh, beautiful feelings beautiful emotions but the strongest one is the love right love and uh, a love it doesn't appear most of the times unfortunately but that's that's up to us i think i mean uh, uh, it's up to us to live in a in a positive way and have a more good feeling uh, and positive feeling uh, uh, have more love during our path have more love uh, during our ways. Uh, it doesn't matter what doesn't matter what we do in our life, and uh, that's the reason why a lot of speakers, a lot of motivational speakers, say to you to be always positive because in, in this way you can have uh, more positive memories, and if you can have more positive memories, uh, you can work better in the, in your future. Okay, let's continue. Overcoming stress for self-healing. Constantly relieving a traumatic experience turns on the body's nervous response. The body uses all of its energy to deal with the constant threat, leaving it no energy for growth and repair. This state can also compromise the immune response. In Anna's case, the repeated inner conflict caused her immune system to attack her body. It was a physical manifestation of the pain and suffering she was going through in her mind. Her mind couldn't move forward and her body couldn't move either. Anna turned on the stress response by thinking about her problems and past. Her thoughts were making her sick. Uh, Since stress hormones are so powerful, she became addicted to her thoughts. Eventually, Anna made an intention, uh, an intentional film choice to change herself and her life. As well as next, this decision carried the energy she needed to force her body to respond to her mind. Chapter 2. Change your future by changing yourself. On a cold winter day in February 2011, Anna chose to change herself and her life. She knew she had to start all over and that moment redefined her. Anna believed in a new future rather than uh, the familiar past. Using meditation techniques, she combined the power of clear intention and elevated emotions. She then used this combination to change her state of being at a biological level. Anna had to change from the inside out, starting with her thoughts, habits and emotions. This had already become uh, hardwired and chemically conditioned into her body. Breaking them would be tough. Anna realized she could train her body to anticipate her future even before it happened. Her unconscious mind didn't know the difference between real and imagined experience, so it embraced both as true. Affecting change at the genetic level. Anna understood that the stress chemical coursing through her body had been turning on unhealthy genes. She could turn on healthy genes instead by embracing uh, elevated positive emotions with more passion than negative ones. Further, Anna learned that uh, genes don't create disease. The environment signals them to create the disease. If she lived every day with the same emotions from her past, Anna was fostering conditions for the genes to cause illness in her body. Instead, she embraced and embodied the emotion of her future life. This meant she could change her genetic expression and align her body with her new future. Over time, Anna could see that her thought patterns had changed. Uh, 
her brain was no longer firing the same uh, circuit, so the old parts stopped wiring together and starting pulling apart. She stopped thinking the old ways and started feeling gratitude and pleasure for the first time in years. Chapter 3. All opportunities exist in the quantum field. These Spencer's ideas seek to combine quantum physics and spirituality. Anna had connect. Okay, dispensa idea seek to combine quantum physics and spirituality. Uh, this is a nice concept. This is a very good concept. Uh, um, also, myself, I think happened. It happened one week ago or something like that. I read that quantum physics uh, believes in uh, uh, in in the afterlife. So, at what happened? Uh, uh, our party cells have uh, our party cells have a, a kind of memory and a conscience about what we do, and these can uh, uh, be alive also after that, and um, and they kind of uh, prove that. So it's interesting how this uh, science can be so close in our uh, uh, spirituality, um, uh, in our uh, spiritual path. Anyway, Anna had connected to a field of information called the quantum field, where all possibilities exist. She had become a new healthy person, free from the old Anna and whom the deceased uh, thrived. By acting and feeling differently, Anna reinvented herself and was reborn. Thoughts define feelings and vice versa. Any, uh, any uh, thought or emotion triggers bio- biochemical reactions to the body that cause the brain to release certain chemicals. These make you feel what you're thinking. Chemical messengers cause you thoughts to manifest physically. You generate more thoughts because of what you're feeling and this becomes a vicious cycle. For example, if you have a, a fearful thought, you start to feel fear. The motion of fear influences you, th- uh, you to think more uh, fearful thoughts, which trigger more chemicals that increase the motions of fear. When you repeatedly fire and wire the same uh, cir- uh, circuits in your brain by thinking the same thoughts, you are hard wiring your brain into a pattern your brain becomes an artifact of past thinking. Uh, The future repeats the past unless you change it. The moment you wake up in the morning, your mind searches for the familiar feeling of you. In effect, you start your day in the past when you start to think about your problems. These are memories of experiences uh, of different people, things, places and times. You create unhappiness futility, pain, and other negative feelings uh, every time you remember the past. Your body and mind are predicting a future based on familiar events and feelings from the past. In the familiar future, there is no room for the unknown. The unknown is unfamiliar and uncertain, but also exciting because it occurs in ways you can't anticipate or expect. So, Dispensa asks, how much room do you have for the unknown? If you can still predict a feeling or experience, you are living in the known. For instance, imagine you are going to have a meeting with co-workers you work with for years. The thoughts of it elicits automatic emotions about what will happen. You can already predict the feeling of that future event based on past experience. This means you are likely to create more of the same feelings and experiences. Emotional energy. Chapter 5. Dispensa proposes that motions are energy motion. For example, when someone walks into a room, their energy is palpable. Everyone has felt and understood the intent and the energy of another person when they are angry or frustrated. Usually that person emits strong signal or energy that carries specific information. Each emotion produces a different frequency. For instance, positive emotions produce much higher frequencies than uh, their negative uh, counterpart. 
This is because they have a different energy level and uh, intents. Here we have a quote of Joe Dispenza. It says, the only way we can change our life is to change our energy, to change the electromagnetic field we're consistently broadcasting. In other words, to change our state of being, we have to change how we think and how we feel. Your place, your energy, where your attention is. If you focus on a familiar emotion, your attention is the past. You are siphoning your power from the present into the past. If you think about the people you have to see, the things you have to do, and the places you have to go, you place your energy into a predictable and known future. This is still based on your past experiences. Before we go through, if you're enjoying this podcast, please consider taking just three seconds to share it with someone else. It is a small gesture that could make a big difference in someone's day. Now, sit back and enjoy the rest of the episode. Uh, just moment, guys. I lose. I I lose. Uh, I lose the page. Where I, where was I? Uh, past experiences. Uh, this oh, your past experiences. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not gonna cut this. It's okay. So. Chapter 6. You become what you think. Dispenser thinks you can make your body follow your mind into the unknown. To change your energy, you must change where you focus. You must change your thoughts and feelings for something new to happen. This is possible. Your body has been following your mind to every experience you have ever had in your life. If you focus your attention and energy on the unknown, your body can also experience a new future. When you focus on a specific visualization, you become present with a particular sequence of thoughts. Your brain and your body, um, your brain and body won't know the difference between what you're thinking and what's happening in the outer world. When you're fully engaged and focused, the inner world of imagination will appear as an outer world experience. Your biology will change accordingly. You can make your brain and body look and feel like a physical experience has already happened without having the actual experience. What you put your attention to and constantly rehearse in your mind becomes who you are and shapes your future. The power of thought. A team of hours, the researchers took a group of volunteers who had never played the piano before and divided the group in half. One half practiced a simple five-finger exercise over five days. The other half imagined doing the same without physically moving their fingers. The brain scans before and after the tests showed that all the subject created many new brain circuits and neural programming. All chains were in the same brain region that controls finger movements, despite one group doing it by thought alone. Other studies with muscle training have obtained similar results. The Cleveland Clinic conducts a study on 10 research subjects aged between 20 and 35. The subjects were to imagine flexing their biceps as hard as possible in five training sections over 12 weeks. The, research, the researchers recorded the subjects' electrical brain activity during the session. They also measured their muscle strength every other week. By the end of the study, the participants had increased their biceps uh, bicep strength by an average of 13.5. Chapter 7. Meditate to transcend the physical realm. Dispensers say that moving into an elevated emotional state for a few minutes can produce significant beneficial change in your body. For example, don't waste your attention and energy focusing on negatives when you get up in the morning. Don't think about the people you have to see, places you must go, or things you must do. These things fracture and drain your creative energy. 
You deplete your reserves when you focus your energy on worldly objects, worries, and problems. Ultimately, you'll have no energy to focus on uh, internally on your thoughts and feelings. How much of your creative energy are you losing to negative emotions such as guilt, hatred, fear, or resentment? You can use all that energy to create the destiny and future you want. To help you turn them words, you'll first have to take your attention off these external things. Use meditation techniques to change your internal states, uh, state and break away from your usual associations. How to meditate. In Becoming Supernatural, Dr. Joe goes on to guide how to achieve this. If you're meditating and start having uh, straight thoughts, those are uh, your usual thinking habits kinking it. It's because you're used to focusing on the same people, places and things for so long. You're putting all your attention on the past, since emotions are records of the past. Therefore, you should stop return to the present moment and disinvest your energy and attention from the past. You train and recondition your body and mind every time you do this, much like training a dog. You are showing the power of your will over your natural programming. Eventually, the body uh, surrenders if you keep returning your attention and energy to the present. This process helps you break the bonds you had already formed with the familiar known reality. And when that happens, you are going beyond the physical world identity and unfolding into the quantum field. How to meditate? If you're meditating and start having a straight thoughts, those are, are your usual thinking habit kicking it. It happens because you're used to focusing on the same people, places and things for so long. You're putting all your attention te- on the past since emotions are records of the past. Therefore, you should stop, return to the present moment and move your energy and attention away from the past. You train a recondition your body and mind every time you do this, much like training a dog. You are showing the power of your will over your natural programming. Eventually, your body will surrender if you keep returning your attention and energy to the present. This process helps you break the bonds you had already formed with the familiar reality. And when that happens, you are going beyond your identity in the physical world and unfolding into the quantum field. Chapter 8. Access and use the powerful quantum field. Invisible energy and information, intelligence or consciousness exist beyond space and time. Dispensa calls this the quantum or unifilled field. Nothing material or physical exists in that field, so you can't perceive it with your senses. However, this field governs all the laws of nature and has an an infinite energy available for our creation with limitless possibilities in this sea of energy. We can create anything. Here another quote from Joe Dispenza. It says, The evidence clearly shows that we are bound by an invisible field of light and information that influences us and others. However, you can't walk through the door into this field as, uh, as somebody. You have to be a nobody. You must be only an awareness, a consciousness, a thought or a possibility. You must live behind the physical world and live only in the present moment. Tapping into the quantum field requires that you break emotional addictions. Those emotions drive your thoughts and feelings. you got to stop feeling the same way so that you can stop putting your attention on the physical world of matter. Instead, focus on the energy of possibility. Such an experience can create significant change in the brain. For one, since you perceive yourself to be on the physical, you stop anticipating danger. The conscious part of your brain, uh, neocortex, is less aroused and slows down. This change is uh, detectable because it causes the brain waves to become more coherent, balanced and in phase with each other. They also move into lower frequency, from beta waves to alpha waves. Alpha waves are associated with calmness and deep thinking that taps into the subconscious. 
Chapter 9. Use your heart intelligence. Dispenser claims that the Anifid uh, field connects all living systems. These connections uh, comprise a collective consciousness. Because of our individual connections to the field, we can influence other people and other living things through it. Because of this field, this is a, a quote, because of this field, information is communicated not locally between people at the subconscious level through the automatic nervous system. In other words, we're bound and connected by an invisible field of energy. And this energy field can affect everyone's behavior, emotional states, and conscious and unconscious thoughts. Dispensa believes that the emotions we project uh, into the world can affect change through the unfit field. It says we can therefore learn to use our heart intelligence to better control this process. The key is to synchronize the brain and the heart, the rational and emotional parts of us, so we create a current signal. Another quote, because the heart sends more information to the brain than the brain sends to the heart, the more coherence you can achieve through the elevated motion of the heart, the more the brain and the heart synchronize. More coherence creates a bigger electromagnetic field around the body. This allows us to have more influence on the world around us. We can also combine this influence if we join with others expressing the same intent and emotions. Dispensa called this phenomenon uh, emergence. This uh, collective power can change the world. For example, a global meditation gathering from 1983 to 1985 was followed by a dramatic decrease, 72% in world terrorism. Dispensa claims that the meditation was responsible for this decrease. Chapter 10. Leverage the power of intention and the elevated emotion. Once you are in a state of inner awareness, you only need two things. You need clear intention and the elevated emotion to turn possibilities into physical reality. Clear intention means you must be as clear, specific and detailed as possible about what you want to create. Make it as uh, thorough and as real as you can. Then combine clear intent with elevated emotions like love, joy or gratitude. You must stop into the feeling you anticipate when you manifest your clear intent because that emotion carries higher energy. If you want to create change, you need to tap into greater energy than the energy driving your pain, fear, anger, shame or uh, unworthiness. Another quote from him, you have to think greater than the way you feel to make any real lasting change. It is so true. You have to think greater than the way you feel to make any real lasting change. It is so true. Uh, you know, I, I, we sometimes feel guilty, right, to think about something that uh, did not happen or uh, think about something that uh, we, we are not. Uh, an ex is an example if if uh, uh, you are not really a good cook uh, but then you say to yourself that you you are good enough to uh, cook good food for 10 people right it looks like you are lying yourself mm -hmm. so um, this can make us a little bit guilty i think um but what I notice in all my readings, writers, uh, books, motivational speakers, um, it's far from the reality. The reality is that if you uh, convince yourself about uh, um, a state, about s something that you are not yet, uh, you actually convince your uh, body, your conscious, your brain uh, um, to be, you know, that kind of person that you wish to be in the future. And this is very interesting. This is very uh, powerful concept. Anyway, chapter 11, 
tap into the power of open focus. In the 1970s, Dr. Les Femi, director of the Princeton Bio- Biofit Back Center, discovered a method. It taught people to move their brain waves from beta waves, active states, active state, to alpha waves, relaxed state. From his studies, he realized that the best way to do it was for the subject to adopt an open focus. Open focus means becoming aware of space and nothingness. Space and nothingness is the traditional Buddhist meditation method that has been used for thousands of years. As you open your mind and focus on sense information rather than matter, your brain waves automatically start to slow into alpha waves. One aim of meditation is to move the focus away from the analytical mind, which separates the conscious mind from the subconscious, slowing down the thinking brain past uh, the analytical mind that allows you to tap into the subconscious operating system. This is where all automatic programs and unconscious habits exist. Final summary and uh, review. What exactly does becoming supernatural mean? It means achieving a state where you can change your body by thought alone. It means using your heart intelligence to influence the world outside your body. It means overcoming challenges in your environment that most normal people wouldn't overcome. Let's go through those key lessons again. First key. Stress and negative emotions can be tolerated for short periods, but you shouldn't let them become long-term habits. You can overcome stress and redirect your energy uh, towards uh, more useful ends. Uh, uh, Second key, you can turn on healthy genes and rewire your brain by embracing elevated positive emotions with more passion than negative ones. Uh, number three, don't be tied to the physical realm where you are defined by your past experiences. Instead, embrace the quantum field or infinite possibility. Beautiful. The third, the third key is very nice. Uh, the fourth, the past repeats itself unless you change it. Create room in your life for the unknown. Number five, emotions can be understood in terms of energy. This energy. Uh, in turn define us to change your state of being you must change what you think and feel number six you become what you think where you choose to direct uh, to direct your mental focus will determine your future thoughts and behavior number seven meditation techniques can help you transcend the physical realm Number eight, if you perceive yourself in the quantum field, you can remove yourself from uh, the restriction and negative emotions of the physical world. You are then empowered to achieve much more. Number nine, you can create change your life by combining clear intent with elevated emotion like love, joy or gratitude. Number 10, adopt an open focus to move beyond the analytical mind and change the pattern of your brain waves. Becoming supernatural is about ability and possibility. It's about changing a predictable future and embracing wider possibilities. Your journey to becoming supernatural begins with reading Dr. Joe Dispenza's book. Let us know how you get on by tagging us on social media. Uh, I love it. Uh, it's a good book. Uh, a little bit complex, in my opinion. L- like not in the um, concept but more in a way he explains but this doesn't change the fact that the book is actually very interesting and uh, guys thank you so much for being here still and uh, I love you so much I love be here with you and you know reading summaries and talking about success, uh, who knows, maybe in the future we're going to make also some, uh, still some interview. Let's see. And, uh, and see you on next Wednesday. Cheers. Here we are. Congratulations. You just finished my entire episode. So the only thing I ask is to take a moment to give Journey to Success a rating. By the way, thank you so much for being here on Journey to Success. I'm very grateful. Thank you and see you next time.